you can always learn something new and you can always learn something from other people. Mm. So I try to always have uh, an open mind for other people's, you know, advice or experiences. I think that it's um, it's very important to, to just realize that nobody really has it figured out and you have, always have to go um, day by day and, mm. and uh, it's everybody's first time at life. So you're just going to have to to try to learn this too. Mm. She's been a tennis player since the age of three and she's one of Sweden's two best players. One of her goals is to reach a top 100 in the world. Uh, today you will get to know Miriam Björklund a little better. We're going to talk about how to set goals, how to get out of dips in life and what happens if you don't reach your goals. Welcome to Railers Play, Miriam. Thank you. Björklund. Nice to see you here. Nice to see you as well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be here. Yeah. Miriam, uh, how would you like to describe yourself? That's always a tough question. Um, I would like to describe myself as a uh, driven, goal-oriented and happy, happy girl. Mm. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Tennis became important very early in your life. Yeah. It was, um, it was a, a hobby at first, you know, as a, as a child. And um, I've always been very determined and... Um, hard-headed when it comes to comes to sports and but I was doing a lot of other sports um, as well and then once I decided tennis was what I wanted to do then that became you know a mm. full-time thing and, and my job now. Mm. Do you remember that moment when you felt that tennis was your thing? Yeah I remember I had to choose quite early in my life what I wanted to do. Um, I was actually mostly doing gymnastics at the time and I just didn't have enough time to play tennis. So I decided to quit with all the other sports and mm. continue on with tennis and have that as uh, my main my main thing. And I put school to the side and everything else to the side um, to do this 100%. And, mm. and I remember that was uh, kind of a freeing moment because it was something that I really wanted to do. Mm. That's a bold thing to do. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But today you're ranked uh, number two in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, you won tournaments. Uh, you have the world as your workplace uh, for a long time. Are you are you living your dream? Yeah, I definitely yeah. am. Um, you know, it is a job, and like any other job, some days can be harder than others. But it doesn't always feel like a job because I enjoy it a lot. So I would definitely say I'm living my dream. Um, but I have more more dreams so um hopefully in the future i will achieve those as well yeah hope so uh, Railers is supporting your journey to the top uh how crucial is it to have that kind of financial support if you want to reach the top for me it's been um a thing that has it it wouldn't have been possible without it um I come from a country here sweden that is uh, our federation is not quite as big as as other federations and it's you pay for this by yourself so you need sponsors if you're somebody like me to to be able to do it in the first place and so it's it wouldn't have been possible without um my sponsors and mm. i'm forever going to be grateful for it and uh it's uh, definitely um something that's gotten me to where i am today mm. nice to hear <laughs> uh Right now you're injured, uh, but you're on your way back. Uh, how do you deal with that? You want to be on, on the court and, and <laughs> yeah. uh, win matches and so on, but, but is that, how do you deal with it? It's definitely not always easy. Oh. Um, it feels like your life is standing still a little bit. Um, and it's not standing still for all the other players and the tour is still going on. So mm. sometimes it can definitely be dif difficult, but... I try to see see it from another perspective and I have time to do things that I don't normally have time for and I haven't had time for the last 15 years, mm. um, both tennis related and, and privately. Um, so I've been trying to improve myself um, in, in the ways that I can, even though I can't be competing right now, I mm. can still train and I can still get better at other things and especially in the gym mm. so i try to stay positive this is perhaps a dumb question but i ask it anyway is it is it possible to 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 train your mental th strength like now when you're injured definitely you yeah i feel like tennis is so mental and you have to be really strong and you have to sometimes 
talk yourself out of your own thoughts. Mm. Um, so it's definitely um, a way to to strengthen your mind uh, once again. And you kind of just have to even more see everything from a from a brighter perspective than mm. than normally when you're playing. Mm. Uh, when did you realize that you needed to set goals in life? I think I was very young, but maybe I didn't realize at the time that they were goals. Um, but, you know, I always had, you know, I always said to my mom, I want to do this or I want to do this. And she was kind of just showing me what was necessary to do and and to reach to, to get there. Mm. So I think from a very young age, I realized that goals uh, are a great way to get out of bed in the morning and to to do the things that aren't necessarily always so easy. Mm. But to be competing on the level uh, that you are right now, it, it, <laughs> you, you must have goals. Otherwise, it's impossible, I, I believe. Yeah, I feel like yeah. if you don't have goals, you don't know when to celebrate. No. Um, and it's important, I think, in, in everybody's life to have small moments to celebrate and bigger moments to celebrate and, and feel good about yourself because you do face a lot of defeat when it comes to to tennis uh every week everybody but one person loses mm. the whole in the whole tournament and if you don't have small things to celebrate then i think it, it can get quite tough mm. so goals are great i think they help you get out of bed like i said and they they help you feel good about yourself they help you remind you of where you are now and where you were before mm. because at times i've had goals to just you know be top five in Sweden and then top two and then I want to be number one or mm. I want to get to Grand Slams and if I don't have those goals to remind me of where I've gotten then I think the journey becomes less fun. Mm. So one, one one tip to our viewers here is to set goals to have smaller and, and greater things to celebrate in life. Yeah, I yeah. think so. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, one of your goals, as you said, is to be top 100 uh, and today I think you're around uh, 200 uh, yeah. Due to your, uh, to your injury and so on. But but how do you feel about being ranked and being a number on the list constantly? I mean, I try not to focus too much on, on the number. Oh. Uh, but at the same time, it's good to know where you're at. And I think a ranking sometimes, it, it's good to know. You know, at one point in my life, I was 500. And at mm. one point in my life, I didn't even have a ranking. So... It's nice to know that I've gotten myself up to the to the ranking that I have today, mm. but and it's also a constant reminder of of where I'm not, you mm. know, in my life right now. But you know that comes with goals. I have a goal to be top hundred, and and I really want to achieve that. So um, have I try you not a to timeline f- when you, when <laughs> I, I must reach top hundred yeah. before this and that date. I've had uh, timelines before, yeah. and and I do really want to reach top hundred this year. Mm. But the reality of it is that sometimes there are things like my injury right now that mm. that give it gives me a little bit of a setback. But at the same time, um, the timeline is mostly just to feel good about myself when I get there, mm. rather than stressing myself to get there. I feel like I will always just be proud if I get to top hundred, no matter if it's this year or next year mm. or you know, later on. Mm. But um, I think a timeline can also stress you out a little bit. Yeah. And we have enough stress with, with our life. So I think it's um, it's maybe unnecessary, but always rather uh, sooner rather than later, yeah. you know. But one, <laughs> I think one interesting question regarding this is that if you don't reach your goals, what happened then? Should you adjust your goal or do you set whole new goals? Sometimes you have to adjust. That's a question in general, but but yeah. also on your tennis life, of course. But I think sometimes you have to adjust the expectation of the goal. Mm. Um, like you said, the timeline. Sometimes you feel like I should have been there by now. Mm. But if you're realistic and you look back at what's happened um, and something's happened that you can't really control, then give yourself, cut yourself some slack. But um, sometimes you have to adjust the way to get there. Mm. It's not always, you might think that you'll get there by doing it this way or this way but maybe you realize along the way and with your experiences that you might have to adjust you know how to get there mm. so, so that necessary don't necessarily mean that it's a failure it's just an adjustment yeah i yeah. i think so i yeah. like i would like to see it that way because a goal is just something that you want to do mm. so you shouldn't stop wanting to get there um 
but yeah, you're gonna have to just find a new solution mm. to to get there. Yeah, Beth, uh, as you said, your goal, uh, primary goal now is to reach top hundred. But do you, in your mind, believe that you could be the best tennis player in the world? I think when I was younger, that was a big uh, a big thing mm. for for all kids. Why are you doing it if you don't want to be the best? Mm. Um, that's kind of the mindset. But as you grow older, I feel like. I just want to be the best that I can be. Mm. Um, and I don't know what the end goal is going to be. Like you said, right now, my goal is to be top 100. Mm. And once I get to top 100, it's probably going to be to be top 50. Mm. Um, and I think, obviously, there are so many great players in the world. And, and being the best, comparing myself to everybody else, is not necessarily the ultimate goal anymore. It's more being better than I was yesterday and you know, constantly improving and I still want to be, you know, up there yeah. with the best, but it's, um, it's a little too far right now to, mm. to think about, um, to think about that. because then I will be unhappy, uh, <laughs> with where I am today. Yeah. So I think, um, being better, uh, every day is yeah. a good goal for me. Yeah. And you can also turn the perspective all the way around and see that, okay, I, I'm actually one of the 100 and 200 or 50 best players in the world. That's kind of cool as well. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, when yeah. I was younger, I was watching people play the Grand Slams and that was a huge thing. Yeah. And um, I've played all of them now and I've qualified for three of them and played, you know, the main, the main draw. So that's been a really, really cool thing for me. Not a lot of Swedish people have done that and, and it's... Um, It's definitely a big thing. So, yeah. And that's also something you can bring with you the, for the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. Another thing that you have to be able to handle is pressure and to deliver under pressure. Uh, I think it's also something that a lot of people can relate to. How did you find your way? I think I've learned to enjoy pressure. It hasn't always been you that enjoy way. Enjoy pressure. Yeah. 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 I think having that pressure makes it very competitive and it makes it even more great when you achieve it and I think pressure is not necessarily a bad thing it's just sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming but the world doesn't stop if you don't achieve something that you have pressure to achieve or but I I kind of enjoy the pressure because um, it means that there is an expectation of me to achieve that and mm people believe I can achieve that, then I know I can, but I just have to go out and do it. Mm. So, and you know, we practice every day to be able to handle these situation and these moments. So I feel like pressure is a privilege sort of. And, um, it means that maybe sometimes you have pressure because you're better than your opponent, but you still have to go out and, and, and win that match. Mm. Um, and it's never going to be easy and the job has to get done, but Sometimes pressure is a good thing because mm. then that means you're not the underdog. Do you have any advice for our viewers how to handle pressure? I think it, it can be different in for everybody, but I think uh, to try to just embrace the feeling of pressure, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. No. So if people can try to have a mindset of like, okay, it, it's uncomfortable, but I'm going to get through it, then you can always um, come out on the other side. Mm. We all have dips in our life uh, and then we need to recharge uh, how do you get out of dips i try to remind myself that they're not forever good moments and bad moments are not uh, gonna last forever and there are things that i've learned throughout my life help me um get out of those situations you know trying to do something fun privately or knowing that i i just have to go and work out because it's sometimes it's just a bad uh cycle mm. and you just have to get out of it and nobody really knows the answer to those things so i think learning from your experiences and um and doing stuff that you know have worked before or even if you don't know what to what works then you just try something new mm. um, try to get out of it and sometimes it takes longer than other, other times but nothing lasts forever no do you do you think that you learn uh, uh, something every day About your body, about your mental uh, strength and about your tennis and so on. Do you think that you... I think so. I think you can always learn something new and you can always learn something from other people. Mm. So I try to always have uh, an open mind for other people's, you know, advice or experiences. I think that it's, um, 
it's very important to to just realize that nobody really has it figured out and you have, always have to go um, day by day and, mm. and uh, it's everybody's first time at life. So you're just going to have to, to try to learn this too. Mm. That's true. Last question. Uh, hopefully you have a lot of years ahead of you in, in the tennis yes. world, but what do you think you will bring with you from the tennis world once you retire? I think a big thing in tennis for me has been the responsibility. I have to take responsibility for my actions and my decisions and and everything. And I, I think it, it has taught me that anything that you want to do, you have to do it. And you can't get somewhere by not doing anything about it. You have to go and do it yourself and, mm. and um, not pity yourself. Sometimes, you know, you face tough moments, but tennis is so individual and you have to deal with a lot of things by yourself. Mm. So I think it's, it's taught me that if, if I want to do something, I don't have to rely on other people to do that. I can actually do it by myself. Mm. And then you're always going to need a little bit of help, but the responsibility and, and holding myself accountable for, for my actions and for my results and everything, my failures, uh, that's a big thing for me. Mm. Sounds like a wise bunch of folks. <laughs> yeah. uh, Miriam, it's been a pleasure getting to know you a little bit better. And, and uh, we uh, really hold both our thumbs that you, <laughs> you be on the court soon again and then that you reach top 100 and you're continuing to, to reach your goals. Thank you. Nice meeting you and uh, see you soon. See you soon. Thank you. And thank you for watching Railers Play and uh, see you soon. Bye. <laughs>